Era o Rahul? Era o Rahul? Hi, hi, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you mute yourself? <laughs> yeah, right, right. I was just finding the mute option. I couldn't find it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi, Karthik. Hi, Uma. Uh, I think the recording has already been started. Yeah. Hello, good morning. We'll get started in a little bit. Hi, good morning. Morning. All right. It's um, so it's 11 a.m. Um, in the East Coast of the United States. So um, we'll get started at 11:02, just to let stragglers do what they do. All right, good morning. It's now two minutes after the hour and this is the SIG app delivery um, twice or every other, this is the SIG apps delivery um, meeting for um, October 23rd. Um, today, what we are going to do is have a two presentations and then some discussion around um, specs that we should be thinking about for SIG apps delivery and then we'll do updates. Um, seeing this uh, meeting doesn't go all day. 
Um, when we're giving the presentations, please try to keep them between um, 15 and 20 minutes. Um, we will uh, definitely chime in. Um, so first up today um, is Uma, are you, are you here? Yes, this is me. Hi, All Brian. right, so Uma, um, the floor is now yours. All right. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, can. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, first of all, uh, Brian and uh, Lee and others uh, for allowing us to present here. Uh, we are all happy to be here. Uh, when I say we, uh, a bunch of people from the Litmus Project. Uh, our hope today here is to introduce Litmus, uh, which is a chaos engineering project for Kubernetes. Uh, we were part of um, the chaos engineering group in CNCF. Uh, which was started by Chris A last year. And uh, looks like, you know, Chris uh, thinks that uh, chaos engineering as an area is being now handled um, in, under this charter. So he recommended us to um, present here and, you know, and the hope, um, the hope here uh, is. Uh, We'll get a lot of coaching, feedback, uh, mentoring, and also uh, encouragement. Uh, that's our uh, our process. Today we have um, along with me. I'm Uma Mukara, uh, co-founder, CEO of a company called My Data. Uh, we also have another project uh, uh, in cloud native data management, uh, Open EBS. Um, and then this is the chaos engineering project uh, that uh, we sponsor. Um, uh, we are uh, about uh, eight uh, full-time uh, members uh, working on this uh, project right now. And the community is starting to really grow. I'll talk about it in a little while. And I'll try to keep this presentation, my presentation, to about 10 minutes. And Karthik, who is the architect of this project, will chime in with uh, a simple um, demo. With that, um, I just wanted to, you know, put it there, uh, the fact that, you know, what we think is the alignment to the gap delivery. Um, so, you know, um, so this is a big project and now it's all, um, you know, people are trying to use it, uh, getting into delivery modes, and then there are a lot of challenges around that. And that's where we, uh, the gap delivery, um, the work group will help uh, the community. Um, so uh, as um, as we move towards uh, development to the CA pipelines to actually staging and production, the chaos engineering becomes more and more uh, relevant. Uh, and then the gap delivery, I could be totally wrong about this. Um, this is my first meeting here, so I'm uh, totally uh, honest. Uh, I want to learn more about what we do as a group here. And uh, what I think is, um, you know, uh, when the application starts, uh, uh, done with the development and then moving towards the production, uh, this group will be more relevant, right, in terms of delivery and how to use it, all that stuff. So we think uh, chaos engineering is, is an area is well fit here, and that's probably what uh, Chris has suggested. Um, so we are uh, very much willing to learn uh, what we can, um, you know, uh, get uh, from here. So uh, before we go into chaos engineering, I just wanted to, uh, this is my typical pitch to everyone else uh, where I, in my meetups and you know, other users, uh, we talk about reliability. Reliability is actually very much important. Outage of services costs, not small dollars, uh, big dollars. So for example, you know, we have seen uh, very standard platforms uh, still facing outages, right? Uh, GitHub, Slack, and even AWS. Um, it does not mean that, you know, they have not followed the reliable testing processes. And in fact, uh, they were some of the best ones. Uh, so the key really is uh, finding weaknesses um, um, in the in this uh, deployments and systems. So failure testing in CA pipelines is generally not good enough. Um, I just have a quote here from Ali Basiri who is a well-known chaos engineering expert that, you know, uh, you could test your apps as much as you want, um, but in production, no one could uh, predict what the environment will be. So there's always a chance to, uh, for the system to fail. So what we do uh, to find the weaknesses, break things on purpose in production. 
So the loop really is find the weakness, fix them, repeat the process. So this brings to, you know, what is this value testing? And now you're talking about chaos testing. So the main difference uh, is failure testing stops at the pipelines. Um, CNCF.ca, for example, is great. And CD is just a matter of pushing the applications from CI uh, to, you know, most likely the SaaS based systems will have a CD. Uh, but chaos testing never ends. Uh, it extends to pre-prod and then production environments. Um, in another way, uh, I also like uh, the way Mark McBride uh, CEO, co-founder of Turbine Labs, explains uh, chaos engineering. He calls it as chaos engineering loop. What it is really is uh, typically uh, in usual engineering, you will have uh, you will wait for the system to be destabilized, an incident to occur, then you fight, fight, resolve, and then try to bring it. But in chaos engineering, you don't wait for it. You inject the fault, you analyze, tune, and then again go back to the observation. So you do the same um, stuff in a little more planned way. Uh, you can choose when to inject. Uh, you can actually cause less disruption. Uh, you can actually do it in uh, staging, pre-prod, and then prod. So this is more planned a way to get uh, resiliency, right? So uh, to summarize, um, in resiliency is achieved by functionality tests as well as failure tests. But in uh, production, it's really achieved by, first of all, you need to have a good CI, mm -hmm. but then you need to have a random chaos as a way to um, uh, submit uh, your chaos and then analyze and then start adding up a more resilient uh, scenarios, right? So this is uh, really important in terms of chaos engineering. Uh, given that as an introduction to chaos engineering, uh, uh, we are, all talking today because you know there is something called cloud native bubble that's uh, happening and then kubernetes is really the environment uh, for the near future and then the whole world is uh, uh, starting to move towards that um so um now i had a chance to uh, listen to um dan uh, in a recent one of the conferences uh, i really liked it the way he explains it, look, you know, Kubernetes has really taken off and it's it's about 35 million uh, lines. Uh, the big project, which is Linux itself is off of the code. And then you're talking about writing a big application, uh, which is about 40,000 lines of code. And if you can see, um, it's compared to the rest of the stuff, it's only 1%, right? It's not even controlled by me. Uh, that includes Kubernetes and a lot of applications that are being developed on top of Kubernetes, right? Um, so how do we really get uh, resilience, right? Uh, how do we make sure that things are uh, going to work well? The answer is really extend your testing to chaos engineering, right? Uh, and then do it in production. Now let's actually start talking about, okay, now I understand the need for chaos engineering in cloud native environment, but how do I do that? So thankfully, uh, Kubernetes gives a lot of resources and then uh, not quite recently, but for some time now, everybody started moving towards CRDs, right? So, but these are all so far has been for development. And then uh, is there a way to standardize um, these APIs for doing cloud native chaos engineering? And then um, that's where uh, you know we chimed in and defined some interfaces for doing chaos through CRDs, so that you know it becomes a little bit more generic than being within a team, so that we can offer chaos engineering as a general feature in in the Kubernetes community. Um, just to explain that a little bit more, um, you know, we all know how to create a pod. The developer gets it done. I want to create more resources. Again, go and do that uh, declarative um, uh, configuration. And then now I'm actually done spinning up my app and then I got all the resources. Now I want to do a chaos testing, right? Uh, it's as simple as actually spinning up uh, one more uh, kind of chaos engine and then um, uh, pulling up the chaos experiments, right? So we envision it, uh, chaos engineering is just an extension of uh, the natural development. And then it should really fit in into the way we do things as developers, as SREs in Kubernetes, right? 
And that brings me to introduce uh, Litmus Chaos. Uh, whatever I said is the requirement that's specifically what Litmus Chaos or Litmus fulfills. Uh, to put it in a way, it's cloud uh, native chaos engineering for Kubernetes uh, developers and SREs. And then how Litmus is used typically. Uh, I'll talk about Litmus uh, Chaos Hub in a second. But let's, let's assume that you have enough experiments, the chaos experiments out there in the hub. Then you have an app running or a pipeline running. And then all you need to do is uh, install Litmus, uh, which is a quite simple thing to do. And then um, that installs uh, the chaos libraries and the chaos operator. And then you pull in the required charts from the hub, right? And this is the community uh, we we expect to grow. Uh, and then everybody uh, starts submitting their stuff into this hub. So you can pull in whatever is the app you're using. There must be some charts that are related to that. So you pull them in. So you install those charts, uh, which are nothing but CRs. Um, and then you start injecting the chaos, right? So the chaos, uh, once you start injecting, this is really nothing but you annotate your app that, hey, you know, uh, start this engine and this engine includes the following experiments. And um, there you go, the chaos container starts up and it turns the chaos and then, you know, uh, you can observe the results, right? Um, now it really brings to what is this chaos hub? You got a good operator framework, but I really need to have the experiments. And uh, the big challenge that we faced is, as a team, uh, we can do all that is needed and we can uh, involve community to develop the infrastructure. But once the infrastructure is done, the major portion uh, that is remaining is the actual chaos experiments of the application, right? And uh, that's where we created the uh, chaos hub. And, uh, uh, let me explain uh, how the process works. But before that, this is how chaos uh, works. It is uh, available at hub.litmuschaos.io. Uh, for now, you know, we are uh, still in the process of moving some of the experiments. I think there are about uh, 20 to 22 experiments already. We have about uh, eight so far. Um, you know, the generic chaos are uh, the ones for the developers to start with, the pod delete, container scale, network loss, network latency, disk uh, fail, and so many of them are there. Actually doing application chaos. So let me explain how that goes, uh, chaos charts life cycle. So typically you all have this in every DevOps uh, environment, uh, right, CA pipelines. And then the pipelines really include um, some functionality and then some failure or HA testing. So the idea is we encourage these developers or the CI pipeline admins to convert the regular failure test into a litmus infrastructure so that you can call it as a chaos experiment. And then you can use them in the pipelines. And then additionally, you push that chart or experiment to the chaos hub so that your application users can use that experiment in either staging or production. So the whole idea is, you know, we believe you in doing the experiment uh, of, you know, in your testing of functionality, but we want, we when I say we, the user of the application wants the failure test cases to be given out to the users of that application so that you know we can use that in production for doing chaos engineering so that's the whole idea of the hub and then um so this sres will start using that experiments uh, in staging uh, to begin with and then when things are good uh, you you typically start doing game days and then you actually uh, move them into production the chaos testing and then as the developers, um, you know, as more and more applications, uh, uh, charts are submitted or experiments are submitted to Chaos Hub, you actually have more uh, failure testing that you can do in your pipelines as well. So that really increases your quality of your application in the pipelines also. So it's a, you know, win-win situation for both your, um, you know, users as well as for your own teams. Just imagine I am converting my legacy application into a cloud native environment, um, which is nothing but, you know, containerize it and run it on Kubernetes. Now I want to uh, prepare a pipeline. Well, I'm using so many databases underneath. Uh, I don't know what 
value testing I need to do for Kubernetes itself, you can actually pull them up from Chaos Hub. So that's the whole idea, right? Um, and then given that, uh, how am I doing on time? Um, think about seven minutes, uh, already 15 minutes. Okay, I think we have a decent community to begin with. Uh, um, and then we have uh, trying to pro follow the standard uh, practices that every other Kubernetes community follows. And we are trying to do a release cadence every uh, 15th of every month. And then there's a community meetup uh, that happens, uh, you know, uh, twice in a month. Um, and then contributing new charts is easy. We are trying to create uh, tools where our developers can really come and uh, you know uh, install some uh, programs which will create the templates and then you just put your failure logic into that and then boom you're ready you test it you submit it to your uh, application right and who's using it uh, in fact litmus is born out of uh, the utv testing that we have prepared for open ebs which is the cncf sandbox project uh, so what we did is look, you know, we have done a lot of um, ETU testing um, that our users can use, our open EVS users. Why don't we actually make this infrastructure open up to the entire Kubernetes ecosystem? So that's how it is. Um, it's in production. I mean, the Litmus is in production in the open EVS community. A lot of users are now beginning to use these Litmus test cases of open EVS in their production environments or at least in staging environments. And as you can see that there's a chaos test pipeline. This is a, you know, uh, have functionality test. And then for every commit of open EBS, now we run about 10 different um, chaos tests that are specific to open EBS, right? So something similar, anybody can construct the negative testing in the pipelines and then get benefited. Um, and then we are really happy that, you know, some users are starting to pitch in. I think uh, we have created some issues. Um, uh, as part of the recent Oktoberfest, uh, we were able to get in touch with uh, some of the community members and then they're uh, in the process of writing these charts. Um, now, really what we want from uh, this group is, you know, give uh, honest feedback uh, where we can improve as well as, um, how to uh, really spread the word. Um, you know, one idea was uh, we can use Litmus just like how we are using in openebs.ci, we can use uh, Litmus as a tool for cncf.ci. I think uh, we are trying to uh, be part of that uh, CSIG and uh, I recommend that. Maybe I'll do this presentation again in that group as well. And then we are already trying to get one block scheduled uh, on whatever I just said, it will be on CNCF. And we are all welcome to join the Slack. It's part of the Kubernetes channel itself. Um, but uh, we want your feedback, coaching. Uh, we will be lurking around in every meeting here. So given that, uh, I don't know whether we have time for demo. Probably not. Uh, we'll do the demo next time. But uh, I'd love to answer any questions. All right, any questions? All right, well, if there isn't, um, you can reach them probably through issues on your um, GitHub project. Would that be a, a good suggestion? Yes. yes, all right. GitHub project and also on the Slack channel on Kubernetes. Yes. All right, so sounds good. Uh, thank you for presenting today. Thank you for giving us an opportunity. All right. Uh, so the next presentation we have is the Captain Pro proposal for CNCF Sandbox project. And Dirk, I thought I saw you earlier. Uh, you ready to present? Yes, I am. All right. Take it away. Thanks. Um, so thanks for the possibility to share our project with the CNCF CCAP delivery. So my name is Dirk and I will present together with my colleague Andy um, what Captain is today. Um, we want to discuss which problem we actually solve with Captain, how we solve it, then quickly um, run through the roadmap, the community ecosystem and then to relations to other projects that are already part of the CNCF. 
So what is Captain? We try to narrow it down to one sentence. It's a message-driven control plane for application delivery and automated operations. And let me lead by two examples that I want to go through, one for application delivery, one for automated operations to get, to get a quick uh, uh, picture of what we're doing here. So application delivery, I think most of the people in this SIG will be familiar with that topic. Um, Captain usually starts with its delivery workflow after a new container has been built. So it, it starts after the continuous integration part. So a new container, for example, a new version of a service is pushed to a uh, container registry or artifact registry and sends Captain an event um, that a new artifact is available. Captain stores all of its configuration in, in a Git repository, updates, updates um, um, specific configuration files, and then triggers a deployment into an environment for example, the Dark deployment executes some tests, gathers monitoring feedback, gets it back to Captain. And according to the feedback, so it has service level indicators and service levels objectives that are assigned to the specific artifact and service, um, decides if, it's, uh, if it meets the quality criteria to be promoted to the next stage, where it would again update a configuration in the Git repository continue to the next stage, for example, with the blue green deployment, again, gathers the monitoring feedback, and in this example decides that the quality criteria is not met, triggers a rollback, and also notifies uh, the user that the rollback was, uh, that the deployment was not successful. The second example, how you can use Captain as a an, as an control plane for automated operations. So as before, a captain is in the middle as the orchestrating um, instance in this use case. And initially we add operations instruction and again store them in the Git repository. And that consists of service level indicators, service level objectives, and also um, information of how specific uh, service level objectives violation can be remediated. After that, Captain can um, set up and configure monitoring rules, for example, in, in Prometheus and set up alerting rules based on the information of the service level objectives that it was given. Then the service is run and um, given any of the SLOs is violated, the monitoring provider detects it and alerts Captain. Captain can see in its configuration if it has an, an applicable remediation action and execute that. In this example, it is a simple scale up um, of course, you could argue you can also do that with, with auto scaling and an HPA with custom metrics. Yes, you can, but you could also think of more um, um, application centric use cases like toggling feature flags. This is also a, a, a viable remediation action. And then again, receive the feedback if the remediation action actually helped to remediate the problem or not. So in the delivery and operations uh, workflows we just saw, there are usually at least three uh, personas included. That includes the developers that usually provide the container and know best what's inside of the container and what the application or the service consists of. And they would usually define the remediation actions. So they know which feature flags are available and which feature flags can be used to remediate certain situations. For example, to switch from delivering dynamic content to delivering cached static content because the requests uh, number of request increases. The second um, um, per person group is the DevOps engineers. Those are usually um, um, responsible for configuring tools, for example, to have Gmeter running in, a, in the right version and that it's able to execute performance tests. And they also um, provide service level indicators, meaning that they um, configure uh, uh, Prometheus in a way, for example, that the SLIs can be retrieved for that specific service that is needed. And last but not least, um, also site reliability engineers are often included. They usually um, define service level objectives on top of the service level indicators and define stages and processes. So historically, most of the work that these three people done together has uh, were done in pipeline files. And that actually leads us to which problem Captain will 
tries to solve or actually solves. So I think all of us have once in our lives written a, a CI CD pipeline and pipelines are a good thing for continuous integration. That's where it actually started out. Then uh, um, additional tasks were added like executing tests and recently also um, taking care of delivery um, um, parts. And the example over here is about 350 lines, so it's not that large. And it includes a lot of information, actually. So it has information about the target platform, which is used. It has implicit information about the used environments. So the, the typical ones are dev staging and production. It has implicit information about the tools that are used. So maybe use Terraform to provision your infrastructure, use Helm for deployment, and Hay for performance testing. And it also knows about the process that is used, which is usually always the same when you think about continuous delivery. So you, you take an artifact, you put it in an environment, you maybe run some tests, evaluate if some quality criteria is met, and then you promote to a next stage if there is one. And what we found actually, and we had discussion with a lot of customers, is that they are under the impression that pipelines is becoming the next unmatched legacy code. And let me reflect on that, why this might be the case, actually. Because for one service, you might need one pipeline. And this is a really uh, a simple example just to highlight the, the facts here. So for one project, you most likely have several services, which would mean you would have several pipelines. And usually, if one writes a good pipeline, as it starts out, the, the pipeline is copied and maybe adapted a little bit because some other some other project uses a different uh, load testing tool or a different deployment tool so you already end up with copies that are slightly changed for a project and if you then actually scale it up to several teams you will end up with several instances that might be still the same the pipelines but you will most likely end up with with a large number of snowflake pipelines and this is actually then hard to maintain. And we already learned in software engineering, one-on-one -on -one copying code is a bad idea. So I also think that it's the same case for, for pipelines, since we are already in the stage where we can write pipelines as code. And the challenges that, that we heard are, if you have this example in mind, where you have like n times x pipelines and you want to and the security team, security team comes up, okay, we need a hardening stage. There has been a, a new uh, guideline we need to follow. You would need to touch each and every one of those pipelines to add this stage. The same goes if you want to use a different tool for specific tasks. You most likely would need to touch a lot of those pipelines. Same goes if you want to add notifications to all steps to have like a, a Slack trail, for example, of all the activity that is going on during application delivery or operations. And a very uh, good example we got is if you run an e-commerce shop, there is this magic time between Black Friday and Cyber Monday where you don't want your site to go down. So maybe during this time, it is not a good idea to automatically promote um, new versions to production. So it might make sense to like carve out a time frame of two weeks where you say, okay, in this time frame, I want manual approval before anything goes to production. And then again, you would need to go to each and every pipeline and, and actually implement this or ask all of the teams nicely to don't um, um, promote to production and hope that they don't do it. So, and this is actually where I want to come to how Captain solves these issues. Um, so we um, solve that by defining application delivery and operations processes in a declarative way. More details to come. We rely on predefined cloud events to actually separate the process of what is happening from the tools, then who is actually executing a deployment or a test or an evaluation. And we, we want to provide an easy way to integrate and switch between different tools. And the declarative delivery, delivery flow, we call them shipyard files. So instead of, of implicitly in integrating that information into your pipeline files, have a shipyard file where you define the stages that you have and the different steps that are taken per stage that are usually built out of 
a deployment, a test, an evaluation, then, then a promotion. So this is really the, the recipe of what to do in which stages. The standardized way of communication is based on the cloud events project. And for each of the steps in each stages, Captain dispatches a cloud event to a PubSubs instance. So currently our PubSub provider is not. And the events decouple perfectly what the current task uh, uh, wants to accomplish from who should it accomplish. So you can also, since it's a PubSub implementation, have several listeners on one topic. So that's, that's also pretty neat. And you get additional context information about the project that is operated or delivered right now. And we introduced the concept of a uniform where you have a declarative way of defining the tools that you actually use to accomplish the tasks that are defined. So for example, a Slack um, trail um, um, service that listens to all topics in the, in the PubSub implementation and just writes out the, uh, the messages. You could in include Argo CD, for example, for deployment and JMeter for performance testing. So this is just an excerpt, of course. Um, and coming back to the challenges that, that we faced before. So the challenges, Captain accepts those challenges and actually has a simple solution to all of them. So instead of um, many manipulating all of your pipeline files, you add your stage and your shipyard file and, and you're basically done because the, 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 the delivery flow and the operation flow is actually, um, um, let's say it's, it's decided at runtime what is done next. So once you update your shipyard file and you add a stage in the current uh, um, delivery run, then the stage is already taken into account. Same goes for if you switch out tools in your uniform files, or if you add an additional tool for an additional event in your uniform file, or you can also change the approval strategy for the production stage in your shipyard file. Um, so coming back to the key features of Captain, um, as already said, it's a message-driven control plane for the delivery and operations. Uses standardized cloud events for communication. We had it in the example we have uh, a GitOps built in, so we have all of the configurations stored in a Git repository um, that also works when it's, when it's offline. So we had the, uh, the situation that, that, that we had a GitOps approach that relied on GitHub being online and then GitHub was down and nothing worked. So this is not a situation that we can live with. So we decided to have a local Git repository and just work with upstreams to various uh, public Git instances. Um, Captain is, I think, one of the first, at least open source project that enables automated operations, so really self-healing for, for applications that is based on SLIs, SLOs, and remediation actions. It works very well in multi-stage and multi-cluster scenarios, so it usually you have a dev staging and the prod environment, and usually these stages are individual Kubernetes clusters. So as opposed to operators, we, for example, if you use operators, you would need an orchestrating entity all over again because uh, operators over clusters uh, um, don't work that well out of the box. We also have support for non-Kubernetes applications. So you can implement and integrate basically any tool that has an API. So as you saw the uniform services before, they get the cloud event and can translate that to whatever is needed. Uh, to be accomplished. So it does not have to be a Kubernetes application or a Kubernetes service. And we, of course, have also observability built in. That means that each application delivery flow and operations flow, we have a, a UUID, a Captain Context, as we call it, uh, that lets us then actually visualize a trace of what has happened in that specific application delivery flow or operations flow. And this is the first version of the visualization. It's not that fancy yet, but we already have plans for the next version to actually uh, level up at this uh, again. So the roadmap, what we actually want to achieve by, by um, um, participating in the CNCF and in the CGAP delivery is extending and collaborating on the cloud event specification. So there are two ways how Captain can integrate and orchestrate tools. Either you write the small service that translates the Captain uh, Cloud event to something that the tooling understands, 
And the other, the other option is the tool understands Captain Cloud events out of the box. That would require us to actually have a lot of conversations with, uh, and at, I wrote it there at first, with all of the CD tools in the CNCF landscape. And I will be glad to have those conversations to actually um, um, take that a step further. And what Captain also brings to the table, it enables easy interoperability between CNCF tools. So if you want to uh, um, use several CNCF tools in one application delivery flow, the orchestration part is already taken care of and you can just um, hook in your tools at the specific steps that you want to use them. We of course want to continue um, um, adding additional cloud native practices like canary releases and also feature-based feature flag based self-healing. There I see, um, um, of course, also, especially in the self-healing space, a collaboration possibility with the guys from Litmos that just had a, a very good presentation. Thanks for that, by the way. So because self-healing works very well when, when there is chaos testing around, so you can actually test if your self-healing strategies work. We, of course, want to continue to improve the, the interface and also want to implement the W3C trace context so you have the ability to visualize uh, uh, your application delivery flows and your operation flows with any trace context um, 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 conform to. We want to build out the support for the uniforms and like a captain's wardrobe service, which is like a, a service registry where you can look up what uh, uh, integrations for other um, tools and services have already been written for captain. And we want to improve self healing. So how does Captain um, map to the model of application delivery? Um, I think uh, the topic 1.5 can be seen as like an, an input, input to Captain, where it's about the app configuration, app parameters. So I see Helm and customize a little bit in that space. And then it basically acts as an orchestration tool for all the topic two and topic three um, um, agendas. So how am I doing on time? 20 minutes. Okay. Um, um, let's see. Um, you got about five more. Five more. Okay. So um, the community is growing. We have uh, 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 a growing community and a lot of engagements on Slack. So a lot of people actually become aware of us now and start engaging with us. We have a growing ecosystem. So there are already um, integrations with other tools there. Some of, us, some of those we wrote our own, some of those were contributed from others. This is a list of companies we are currently working with on Captain. So this is uh, a lot of, let's say there are banking in there, GSIs, SIs, and performance um, 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 load testing with Neotis, for example, and also other workflow tools like X Matters are striving for an integration with Captain and have actually already built one. Relation and distinction to other CNCF projects. So this is a really interesting topic, I think. So Captain uses out-of-the-box Helm for, for deployment. So we have a batteries included service um, that does simple continuous delivery tasks. Why do we have that? because we want um, for people that want to try out Captain to have an easy experience of trying it out and not, not having the need to configure four different projects to actually get the Captain experience. Envoy is you, we used in, in, in conjunction with Istio for traffic routing with blue-green deployments. We use Prometheus as a monitoring provider and we already had that we base clouds events our standard way of communication. The relation to the CD and observability space is a pretty clear one for me. So we want to build out integrations and collaborate on the cloud event specification. And of course, there are already existing workflow tools like Brigade, Argo Workflows, Tecton, Jenkins X. And th th there are certain differences um, to each of those tools um, that we, we, can, we can gladly discuss if you want to have more information on that. So if you actually have any questions and don't find the time to, to ask them now, please feel free to reach out on the Captain Slack channel, um, um, join our community. So we also have bi-weekly community meetings um, or write us an email or just create an issue in the GitHub project as Brian uh, pointed out earlier. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention and hope you consider Captain as a CNCF um, um, sandbox project. 
All right, thank you, Dirk. Um, uh, thank you. So um, we're coming up short on time, and um, we still have uh, a couple of um, items that I want to um, to to go over today. Um, and so um, next up on the list would be um, uh, this says CNAB, OAM, OMS. Any other specs to consider for simplifying app delivery, and and what this brings up is a, is actually a, a much larger topic. Is that um, one thing that um, we need to do in SIG app delivery is uh, start cataloging these uh, these specs, whether it be the um, the three that are mentioned or others that that might show up. Um, so um, we don't actually have the um, so. We're still new, we're a month and a so, or a month or so into this real process. But what we need to do next on this process is um, um, solicit some volunteers to help um, catalog some of these views. Um, I won't ask for it here because um, uh, everyone isn't online, but I actually will send it out to the mailing list that um, before we think about um, considering these specs, let's create a catalog of these specs uh, so we can know what we're talking about. And I'll make sure that we bring it up in our next meeting to show the status of that. And uh, next up, is there is there any other updates that um, anyone wants anyone here to know? And, and I can start off with, um, we did move our meeting calendar. Um, the If you follow the CNCF calendar invite, our next meeting is on November 6th. So just keep that in mind. And, and then the next two weeks from then, since we're moving to the first and the third, would be on the 20th of November. But that will not happen. And we're going to cancel that meeting because that is during um, KubeCon slash CloudNativeCon. So we will not be doing that one. Um, any other updates? Yes. And as Amy pointed out, it is already, um, it is already canceled. I just wanted to say it out loud. Do a follow up in um, December on every yes. only one meeting for the month of November. Yes, um, but I wanted to also highlight something else that um, was brought up on the on in Slack, and um, SIG app delivery is tasked with a lots of uh, different functions right now. And we want to make sure that we are showing our um, showing the projects from the community, but also weighing that with other tasks that we're doing, like the um, documentation we did around the um, delivery definition. So we want to make sure that um, that everyone knows that we won't just be doing demos. Uh, we will be doing other things as well. And um, if you have and if you have things that you want to talk about, um, please. Uh, update our agenda documentation and we'll get we'll get that um, prioritized and scheduled. So that's all I have. Anyone else? I think I want to add more thing is that um, I think you guys may notice that there are a lot of projects right now they're pre presenting in a SIG application delivery. Well, I think it still needs some time to get formal feedback because we are still talking with CNCF TOCs to formalize the process, like what will be the next step, what will be the um, recommendation later or something. So I think it's still not finalized yet. So I think the project have presented in CGAP delivery may still wait for a few time before um, all of this stuff become finalized. I think Alois is, is, is talking with TOC right now, right? There are some conversations going on right now trying to figure out how this whole process works. So it's okay. one flux. Okay. Anything else? Because if not, I will um, end this right now and we can go about our days. All right. Sounds good. Um, thank you for showing up, everybody. Uh, we'll see you again on the 6th of November. Thanks, Al. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.